You can go good, please. <laughs> nice to have a good buddy like Robert. We figured it out the other day. I'm 20 something years older than him, so I call him son because of your dad. <laughs> ah, where are we going? Oh, here we go through that again. Praise the Lord. I think we're beginning with praying to the Lord and asking the Holy Spirit to come in here and uh, take over. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of coming before you and worshiping you in song and word and truth. I ask you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, to come and you could take over the service. We're going to let you have it. Let the words that come out of my mouth be the words that you put in there. And Lord God, we just ask you in the precious name of Jesus. I'd like to thank uh, our dear pastor for the privilege of being able to stand up here behind this pulpit. You know, that's a lost thing. It used to be that the pulpit was sacred. I remember when I was a kid, you didn't get behind the pulpit in church. You got in trouble. And nobody honors it anymore. That's the world we're living in. I know you wasn't even allowed to run across the stage in front of it without being in trouble. Get started here. I had a guy say something to me there and I had to straighten it out. He said every time Jesus spoke to his disciples, that wasn't for us. He was speaking to his disciples. I said, yeah, he was speaking to his disciples. You ain't his disciple. If you ain't a disciple, you just get down here and get it right with the Lord and become a disciple. Come on. Everything he taught was for everybody here. Amen. It was all for all of us. It was his teaching. He taught his, you know, disciple is a follower. If you're not following after Christ, then you need to get it right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you got your iron toed shoes on. You might step on some toes. Come on, Bo. You never know. People ask me, why don't we have the old time Holy Ghost meetings and all that kind of thing we used to have, you know, the moving in the spirit in the church. And I tell them, I say, it's because we as believers have kicked the Holy Spirit out of church. I mean, we've kicked Him out of everything else and we've kicked the Holy Spirit out of church. The Holy Spirit, nobody wants to see the moving of the Holy Spirit. No one wants to see anybody falling out in the Spirit. No one wants to see anybody get filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking tongues, they don't hear them tongues. It must be important because God made a whole new chapter about tongues. And it's in the Bible. Come on. So it must be important. No one wants to see anybody get slain in the Spirit and get healed right there. Come on, boy. They don't want to see somebody get up out of a wheelchair and walk. Come on. Nobody wants to see all that anymore. That's why we don't have a Holy Ghost meeting anymore. We've kicked Him out of the church. It's time to bring Him back into Amen. the church. Amen. Yeah. It's time to quit using Him as an it or a Adam. He is every bit God and is the Son, Father, and the Son. Every bit. He is the power of the Almighty God. Every time God said, let there be, the Holy Spirit did it. Come on. Every single time. He was the go-to guy. Whenever Jesus got <coughs> baptized, Jesus told the Holy Spirit, said, take Jesus into the devil. I'm going to have him tested by the devil. So anytime he wanted something done, the Holy Spirit did it. So you got to realize why it was so important for the Jesus to tell his disciples, I gotta go. If it ain't if I don't go, then you won't get the comfort. And he said, I will send one that is equally as strong as I. Because he knew that we would need somebody strong enough to get things done. We have just Overlook the Holy Spirit. You need to learn to get a personal relationship 
with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Just as much as you do with Jesus. It don't mean that you quit worshiping Jesus. That's not. You got to keep him up there in front. You got to accept what he did at the cross on Calvary, and accept what he did when he died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. You got to accept it. People ask me, says, uh, "How do you talk about the Holy Spirit so much?" Well, I talk to him every single morning. Me and him had a cup of coffee. And we talk over and pray. And talk over people who have needs and things like that. We get in the Word together and He explains it to me. Before I even get going, I ask Him to open my understanding to this Word. Grant me the wisdom and the knowledge that goes with it. Because without that, you're not going to understand it. I've had more people say, I tried the Bible, I just don't understand it. Well, let me introduce you to getting born again. If you get born again, you'll understand it. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Yeah, you want to preach a while? <laughs> People say that uh, my prayers don't get answered when I'm trying to pray to the Holy Spirit and pray to God. And I said, well... I said, what seems to be the problem? I don't know. I pray and ask and all that. I said, well, how are you asking? Well, you know, I said, you, touch, you sound to me like you really don't believe that he's going to answer your prayer. And if you've got the least little bit of doubt in the back of your mind when you're asking for something, it's not going to happen. Too many times people tell me, that, well, you know, you think about it and when you ask for something, you know, you're not for sure that you're really going to get it. And I said, well, you're defeated right there. That right there, if you, you might as well just forget it now. You done messed up. That little bit of doubt, saying, I don't know if it gets strange or not, you done blew it. <coughs> doubt and unbelief kills the Amen. Amen. Back again about the Holy Spirit. We don't welcome Him in the church. When the pastor, when, when all of our music is going, that's the time for you to get up and get you a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, say hi to everybody and all that stuff. But when that music stops, that's when everything else stops. No more getting up and running around the building. No more slamming the doors and going out and doing this. And getting in the corner and have a little gospel, gossip meeting and somebody and a cell phone's going off. As soon as you get in this building, you should turn that thing on quiet. I mean, if you're expecting an emergency call or something, you can put that thing on vibrate. You can feel it. You can see it when it lights up. But put that thing on silence. But when the pastor gets up here to preach, he wants silence. He wants the Holy Spirit to come. He has studied all week, got his sermon together, and he's full of the Holy Ghost, and he wants to impart it to each and every one of us. But we're doing what the Bible says don't do. We're quenching the Holy Ghost. We do. He said they're very sensitive. If we don't pay attention to what's going on up here, how can he help you out there? I mean, we've got to start thinking about these things, people. If we want to have a movement in the church, movement in the Spirit, we've got to honor the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've got to honor the movement. You've got to honor Amen. the pastor that's standing up here trying to tell you something. And we're doing all kinds of things to distract. Distraction. Now, a little bit of distraction will turn the Holy Ghost off. He's very sensitive. And he won't put himself out on anybody. And I said before, you need to make a personal relationship. He won't make you do it. He waits for you to ask him. That's yeah. all he's waiting for. He is just waiting for you to ask him to appear with you and have a personal relationship with you. I thought when I first started 
praying to it and studying about the Holy Spirit real hard. And I couldn't figure out, you know, it seemed like, what are you getting the Lord? You know, and here we are in the day of the day. And we want it now. You know, if we don't get an answer in five minutes, we do all the heck with it. We need to blow it off. And that's the reason why we don't have the Holy Spirit in you. A lot of people are afraid to get the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't want to get embarrassed and speak in tongues in front of everybody. And, you know, it's not about you. Come on. you got to get self out of there. I tell everybody, the number one enemy against God is self. Because we want that little bit of control. We don't want to let go of it. We want to have that little bit of control left on us. We're afraid if we give him every bit of ourselves. Paul had my recluse. You're right, it will. To honor that spirit. You can tell where I come from when I say war. My wife, she's in love state in New York. She used to laugh at me when I was wash. It's wash. When you wash, I'll wash. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what I said, too. <laughs> you know, we have a great God. A great God. You know that there are 17 different Jehovah names for Jehovah? 17 different ones. I'm not going to recite them. I couldn't do it anyway. I'd have to read it because they're very long. But there are 17 Jehovahs. When Moses was getting ready to go see Pharaoh and ask him, this will ask to be let go. He said, who am I going to tell him is sending me? He said, I am what I am. He said, okay. His name is I am. I've got just a couple of examples here. And John is eat up with it. But you'll get the idea here. He is the great I am, the Israelites, they, they wouldn't say his name. They were afraid to say his name. Now I am. They would say everything else, Yahweh and all that, and they wouldn't say his name. And everything. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. John 6, 35. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not fall and walk in darkness. John 8, 12. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will, will be served, saved, and I will go in and out with him and find pasture. John 10, 9. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. How about that? Come on. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes it away. Those who do bear fruit, fruit He will prune so it will grow more fruit. That's just a couple of samples. Do you realize that we use God's name every single day? Every single day, every minute of the day, just about, I am going to the store. I am going outside. I am going to do this. I am we're saying I am all day long. Call on God's name. Don't even realize it. I don't know what's going on in my nose that somebody got up here. I used to have some them cleanups up here and they're gone. Maybe I gotta clean it. Praise God. 
Next time you start to go to the store and you tell somebody, I'm going to the store, I am. Remember what you're saying. You're calling out the words, the name of God. In my closing sound here, I have some things that I write down when people ask me different things about what's going on and everything. I tell them, hey, I don't know no more than you know. But I do have somebody that knows what's going on. Amen. And I can talk to him and he will talk to me. He can actually talk to God. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Well, no. Well, let me introduce you to it. And you'll be talking to him every day. Amen. So my answer is, what in the world is going on? Well, we give the devil too much credit for what's going on, too. We never think about that what's going on might be some of God. He might be behind some of this. Second Timothy chapter three. 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 Um, 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 I can't see. Nope, I got it. It's just slow, sorry. I had it open. I was trying to. I have a King James version. King James? Chapter 3. Come back. Holy crap. You got it? Let me see if I can read it that thing. One second. Three. Give me just a second. Second time is the chapter 3. There you go. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, and blasphemers, disobedient to the parents, and unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and that means no self control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors. Any minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Does that sound anything like what's happening today? Come on. All right. Let's go to the next, next chapter here. I'll get it to you. Turn over to uh, Revelation chapter 6. Now you're getting good. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 3, I believe it is. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Uh, what did you do? What did you do? I don't know. Why did when he you had opened the second seal, <laughs> I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. Can you come up? Uh, it's not and doing it. I don't know what. Oh, no, there it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Red horse, okay. And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And it was given to him the great sword. What's happening right now? Last weekend, 80-something people were shot, 29 killed in Chicago alone. Does that tell you anything? Revelation 21, verse 8. Come on. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's pretty plain, isn't it? 
Are we playing? Now, uh, Stephen, when we were starting this, that I was using the uh, King James, but I am very stickler about how all the scripture goes. The uh, Dead Sea Scrolls that they got in Israel, they say, is the closest to the original, and the uh, King James Version is the closest to that. So you need to take that. Now, all these other versions of the Bible, whatever you want to call them, they're good for study. I'm not telling you to throw the Bible away or to put it in there. Whenever they're leaving out words, leaving out whole scriptures, the NIV left 152 scriptures out. You know, the Living Bible, I haven't got the full account, but they left several scriptures out of the Living Bible. Go to uh, Revelation 22. Verse 18 through 20, the last one of the Bible. This is why I don't put any stock in all these other Bibles. People can believe what they want, they can say it the way they want to say it. For I testify unto you that every man that heareth the word of this prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. If any man shall take away from the word of this book, the prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Uh-oh. Day of judgment. If your name's not found in that book, you're going to the lake of fire. I mean, it's that plain and simple. If any man shall take away, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Jesus wrote these things all written in red. And he says, Behold, I'll come quickly and I'll take your candlestick out. So you see, we, we can't get too quick to blame the, the devil for all of this stuff going on around us. I mean, to me, we're entering into the book of Revelation. Come on. He said, in this life you shall have tribulation. Are we having tribulation? We are in the beginning of sorrows. <coughs> we are in it. I mean, this is a, your, your choice, your way of believing it. But the whole thing is, if we are entering into the end time prophecy, it's time for everybody to get right with the Lord. It's time to get the Holy Spirit back in the church. It's time to get people moving again with the Holy Spirit movement. And get people saved. All of your loved ones and relatives and stuff that don't know Jesus, it's time. It's far back. you got to quit thinking about yourself. you got to quit thinking about, well, what if they turn me down? What if they get mad at me? What if they do? They did the same thing to Jesus. He said, they hate me, they're going to hate you. So don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do it. It's time to bring people into the church. Or even out there on the road like we do in the CMA. And get them born right there beside the motorcycle. Amen. Amen, buddy. You wouldn't believe the number of salvation out there on the highway. I mean, I don't know who's counting, but I mean, they, they have a list of how many souls have been saved. And it's up in a million through our, our ministry of the CMA. On Father's Day, we're having a, <coughs> another meeting down here at Fort Horse Heart. And we'll be preaching down there the next month, next uh, July, I'll be preaching down there. The whole thing is, we're out after winning people for the Lord. Seems like that's been a, a lost cause here lately or something because I've asked so many people, how many people have you led in the Lord lately? Well, you know, I don't get a chance to. You don't get a chance or you don't want to. 
I mean, let's get honest with it, you know. Your salvation isn't for you. When He saved your soul, you accepted it. You became His. He said, Behold, old things are passed away and all things have become new. He even tells you and he asks you a question in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. He says, What? Know you not you're not your own? You have been bought with a price. So we got to forget that we're our own self. We don't want to our own self anymore. We are a whole new creation in Christ Jesus. A creation that never existed until you accepted Christ. And you are a new creation in Christ. Well, I got an old song I was singing about the guy that, uh, you know, he might have the same clothes and the same name and look the same and everything, but if you can see inside, you find out that he's a new man. And that's what we got to do, folks. And I thank y'all for listening to me, and I thank the whole church for being able to have me up here, especially my pastor, Norman. I hope you're having a good time up there in Fort Walton View. Not getting rained up. Love you, man. Love all of you. Thank you. Close in prayer. I'm going to let Robert close us in prayer. You know, he's right about all that. He's about running God out of the church. Everything's become a show. We don't invite the Holy Spirit in here near as much as what we used to do. You know, when I was a kid, my pastor, that was the first thing he did was he called on the Holy Spirit to fill the church, touch each and every heart. And, uh, I know pastor prays it because I pray with him right there every Sunday. A lot of times on Wednesday. And uh, us ourselves, if you, you have to build that relationship with God to be able to feel that Holy Spirit. To be a Christian is one thing. To have that personal relationship with God. To know without a shadow of a doubt you're going to hear, enter in thou good and faithful servant. And not have to step up there with a little bit of doubt in the back of my God, I hope you let me in. We need to be in that position, each and every one of us. But we're searching for God every day. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you all the praise and glory. Father, we thank you for the word that you have given us tonight reminding us that we need your Holy Spirit each and every day to guide us in everything that we do for Father. Lord, we ask for your hedge of protection around this whole family, Father. Keep us and guide us as we go through this week. Help us in everything that we do that we will be the witness you called us to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God, have a very blessed week.